1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17, I'm just going to read one verse. I think, yeah, one verse. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 50. We continue our series studying the life, the path of David. We've been in a series for the past three weeks, Embrace the Path. We all got a path, but a lot of us have not yet to embrace it. Why? Because it gets a little bumpy sometimes. It gets a little hard, it gets a little rough. So sometimes we don't want to endure what we have to go through. But I think the journey of David can be one that encourages us as we see him go from the field uh, to the palace, the field uh, to the castle. If you're there, say there. Yeah. Who's the person next to you just say, how you doing? Just a real, a real look, a real, a real look like, how, how you doing? How you really doing? How, how you really doing? You okay? You, you okay? You okay? You good? You good? You need to be here. You need to be here. Verse 50, read the read from the English Standard Version. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. There was no sword in the hand of David. You may be seated. If we were all to examine the course of our life as believers, we could all, I'm sure, attest to the fact that we are either on our way into a fight with a giant. You've heard this proverb. And if you're not on your way into a fight with a giant, then you're probably in the middle of a fight with a giant. It's probably a third of you, and maybe you're not on your way into a fight with a giant and maybe you're not in the middle of a fight with a giant then you're probably on your way out <laughs> from just having a fight with a giant and then every now and then you can even look at your life and you can feel like that you're on your way in in the middle and on your way out all at the same time one thing that I've realized about Giants and being attacked and being oppressed by them is that they have no discrimination. Uh, giants, they come up against the rich, the wealthy, those who own yachts and those who own islands. And they also come up against those who own government assistance and can't pay their bills. The giants come up against blacks, whites, Hispanics, and anything in between, if that includes you as well. There is no discrimination. We all experience giants. They come in different forms. They come in different shapes and fashions. Giants will show up on your job. Some of you dealing with some giants in your departments right now in the upper management. Giants, they'll show up in your marriage. A lot of us can probably attest to that whether you've been there or you are there right now. They'll show up in relationships. They'll show up on your child's school. They'll show up on the playground with your kids. They will show up in your children, in your, anybody got any parents in here? They will, giants will show up in your children. They'll show up in your neighbor, they'll show up, they'll show up, show up in your baby and mama, your baby mama, your baby mama and your baby daddy. Giants will show up anywhere, but I came this morning to tell somebody that giants do die. Somebody shout, giants do die. For those who like to write topics down, that's what I want to talk about this morning, the fact that giants they do die. And I didn't say that you won't fight giants. I just said that giants will die. I didn't say that it won't be a battle. I didn't say you won't be scratched up or scraped up. I didn't even say, Terrica, that you won't be knocked down in almost every round, one through nine. But what I did say is by the time you get to 10, guess what? Giants will die. That's a promise for the believer that we can hold on to. And I want at least 17 people to leave here this morning believing that whatever giant you're facing, whatever obstacle, whatever you're going through, whatever you are running up against, or whatever you just ran from, God is able to destroy giants in our lives. Why is that? Because even though giants are strong, guess what? Our God is stronger. Even though giants are big, guess what? Our God is bigger. Even though giants can be strategic, we serve a God that has created all strategy that ever existed on the face of this earth. Now we finished last week, for those who have been here, 
uh, talking about David and he got hired by King Saul. I'm not going to try to recap re re uh, this whole series. Go back on YouTube and check it out. But last week we ended with David being hired by Saul to be his armor bearer and his musician. And what I love about that part is the fact that David didn't have to lie, cheat, or manipulate himself into favor with King Saul. When you go back at that chapter and it talks about that portion of verses, it says that Saul fell in love with David. <laughs> it says that when David came in there and he played the harp and the evil spirit ran away from him, Saul offered him a job, and it says that he fell in love with David. David, I want to let somebody know who's trying to manipulate their way. Y'all do know that saints, they do cheat and they do lie to try to get what they want. Everybody has not been delivered. But you don't have to cheat your way into favor with man. You don't have to lie your way into favor with man. You ain't got to backstab nobody on your job to get a promotion. You ain't got to be writing uh, emails to upper management from a private email you created on Yahoo. Talking about you don't know my name at Yahoo.com. Trying to to get somebody else removed out of position so you can have that opportunity. As believers and saints of God, we don't have to do that. The writer of Proverbs, if you go to chapter 3, verse 1, says, hey, I love those who keep my commandments. And then when you jump down to verse 4, it says that as a result of keeping my commandment, God will give you favor with him and with man. He doesn't say you got to manipul manipulate your way to favor with man. He said you just got to obey me. He didn't say you got to lie so you can get some favor with man and your upper man. All he said is you got to obey me. So obedience opens the door with favor, not only with God, but with man. So I don't know how you've been trying to get promoted on your job. I don't know how you've been trying to gain favor with the mortgage company, man. I don't know how you've been trying to get gain favor with anybody else who has something that you want, desire, and need. But God says if it ain't obedience, that ain't what you got to do. All you got to do is live for me, and I'll open up doors that no man can close. All you got to do is obey. And I will put you at the table. You ain't got to get no strategy out on how you can cross over nine people. Why? Because what's for me is for me. All I got to do is obey. Listen, we've lied to ourselves too long and we've said nobody can close the door. But guess what? There's one person that can close the door on God's promises and that's you. If you don't obey God, then the door is closed. I'm preaching already. I'll wait until I get to the end. You won. You, he called you last night and you won this weekend. You did 
this message. But guess what? Next week he's going to text again. Okay, next week she's going to text again, Mary brother. You didn't accept the friend request this time, but she's going to request it again. Will you be ready? I think that's why we got to focus consistently on our spiritual growth. Because what you defeated before, it's coming back again. And it's coming back greater. It's coming back stronger. The question is, will you be better? <laughs> will you go review the tape of the fight that you just won? Or did you just hang up the belt and then go and chill on the couch? <laughs> While the person who tried to take you out, the enemy, the devil that tried to take you out, is out examining your life, your life, trying to figure out how can I get a better hit in next time. <laughs> so we have to do what? Focus on our spirituality. Secondly, another thing that I see in this Philistine and Israel battle over the course of a thousand years over the life, they had seven major battles. <laughs> seven major battles. Now, when God told them to go into the promised land, and he said go into a land that the Philistines were in, there was something that they had to know. They wasn't just going to be able to walk in there with a piece of paper and say, hey, I just want to let you know, uh, God told me that this is our land. <laughs> Here's the deed that God gave us. Y'all need to move out. There was going to be a fight involved in them obtaining the land that God had for them. So what is another thing that I learned from the story of Israelite and the Philistines fight is the fact that uh, God's promises are typically connected to a fight. Everything that God has shown you you're going to have to fight for it. Everything that the glimpses that God has given you, Eric, of what you can have in your life while you serve him, guess what? You're going to have to battle for it. You're going to have to pray for it. You're going to have to fight some giants for it. You're going to have to fight some devils for it. You're going to have to fast. I wish I was in third tonight when we were talking about fasting because there's a strength and a power that only comes to people who pray and fast. They don't believe me, see, because y'all don't come to Bible study. I gotta reteach this stuff all over again. The disciples, they came to Jesus. They couldn't cast out a demon, Terrica. Watch me. You were here. So we'll just act like I'm giving you a recap. They, the disciples, they came to Jesus. They couldn't cast out a devil. And they was like, what's going on? Because we've been casting out devils all around town. And then we get to this devil, and all of a sudden, we can't break it. All of a sudden, it won't come forth. It won't come loose. And Jesus said, there are some devils. <laughs> there are some chains. There are some bondages that don't just come out unless you are a prayer and a faster. There's a spiritual strength for people who get down on their face and push their plate back. So maybe the reason you haven't been able to break the stuff that's binding you right now is because you won't push your plate back and get the, the power that God has with know you. Maybe the reason why you don't have the power to keep going every time you get into a fight with, you ain't even fighting giants, you're losing the little mouse, okay? Because you won't push your plate back and get down on your knees. Everything that God has for you, you better be ready to fight for it. And, and I know God is so tired of us being mad at him. <laughs> I know God gotta be so tired of us being mad at him because he thinks, because we think he's not giving us what he told us he would give us. And God is like, you ain't ready for it. You keep losing all of these battles. Do you know that you're going to have to face a giant? <laughs> the end from the beginning, David was going to have to face. David was not going to make it to the castle without going through a giant. Yeah, amen. Simple. Look at me. Catch this. You are not going to make it to the place that God wants you to be unless you can overcome some giants in your life. You are going to have to be an overcomer and you can't do it in your own strength. Look at somebody and say, you need Jesus. You need Jesus. So the enemy is preparing for war. I promise my intro is not going to be as long as it, as it normally is, but at least give me 30 more minutes before we get to the actual message, okay? The enemy was preparing for war against God's army. And when you go back to the beginning of that 17, oh, this blew me away. They settled in a place called Soko, which belonged to Judah. Who was Judah? Judah was a tribe or a group of people in the Israelite nation, God's chosen people. And it said that the Philistines, they settled in Soko. History says that Judah used to own that. So where is Judah? Somehow, some way, some point in 
in time, Judah moved out of Soko, so now the enemy is there. What does that have anything to do with us this morning? Judah, the word Judah is Yada, Yehuda, which literally means praise. <laughs> Somebody gonna catch this in a minute. The enemy was now living where praise used to live. <laughs> Ain't nothing on your vision board been received yet. 
your hair ain't even grew as long as you put on the vision board. By, 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 by November 2nd, my hair gonna be this long. It's still the same length. God didn't even lie about the hair. God ain't never told you your hair was gonna grow in the first place. But this is what you look like in January. And then February came and you were still there a little bit, but it just went down a little bit right there, right there. That's how, that's how some of us looked in February and March. Now, we couldn't know that. Nobody around you could notice that because it was just a subtle drop. Now, you dropping on your, okay. So you can drop that to another, okay. <laughs> the devil like, oh, that's what, the, some of y'all too easy for the devil. He ain't even had to work. The devil ain't even do nothing. You're weak. You already, you already, you already losing your brain just because of time. <laughs> devil like, okay. I sent the number, I sent the level three devil, but he don't even need that. Just bring my three back and just in level one, okay? <laughs> Look, hey, just, just go ahead, brother. <laughs> Look, listen, hold on, listen. Imagine if he wasn't here and this was his life. That's why it's beneficial for you to be here because you need some people that can hold your hand. Just that quick. 
he was removed from worship to his phone. Ooh, that's one of the number one tools of the enemy right now. We're preaching an all new message right now. We're just doing whatever God said. <laughs> the distraction, what the devil will use this thing. Some of you ain't picked up your Bible in two months because this is the only thing you pick up. Some of you, you may, our marriages is messed up because of this right here. Some of us ain't got no relationship with our kids because of this right here. Our six-year-olds, they on the phone, we on the phone, ain't nobody got time to communicate with each other. <laughs> you go to a restaurant and it'd be a family of five and everybody on the phone. <laughs> See, we got rules for us. No phones come out when we go out to dinner. No, you can check it every now and then. You know, you when one of us go to the bathroom, you sneak on there and check it. <laughs> but we're not going to be right here with the phones on the table while we're out there, okay? You're like, man, come on with it. <laughs> Embrace your past. Cause you ain't gonna walk when you get the when these pets start getting strong right here. Boy, your wife gonna be cooking all the chicken in the world. <laughs> but as the devil lies to us, our praise goes down and because our perspective has changed. You know, God doesn't care. God's not a supporter of you. God is not a provider of you. And, and before you know it, man, by no, and then that's where we some of us are in November. All the hell we done went through from January to November, we could not even lift our hands this morning. What do I do when I'm at that place? You believe the lies of Satan about God so long, now you got to find out what's the truth about God. What is the truth about God? The devil told me God does not is not a provider, but the Bible says if you seek me first, all these things shall be added unto me. The devil told me that God is not a healer because I've been dealing with this sickness on and off for 14 years, but the Bible says by his what? By his stripes. I am healed. I got to take the truth of God and now I got to present it to the devil. I heard a preacher say it. I don't like stealing other people's stuff. He said, you don't ignore Satan. You speak to Satan. <laughs> and Jesus is the evidence of that because everything that Satan threw at Jesus when he was in the wilderness for 40 days, he didn't ignore Satan. He didn't walk away from Satan. He didn't say, ah, uh, uh, say no I'm not listening to he engaged him uh -huh. by saying <laughs> God said <laughs> the Bible said he spoke to the lie with the truth the problem is too many of us don't know the truth all we know is for God so loved the world <laughs> that he gave his only begotten son but baby when you sick and that doctor said they can't do nothing for you I need more than for God so loved the world <laughs> I need somebody to say something. I need something about my body, not the world. <laughs> I don't care nothing about the body right now. The doctor just said I got cancer. So I need something in the word about my current situation. And too many of us are going through stuff and we don't have no truth. So when Satan comes and tells you a lie, what do you have to combat it with? Yeah. Only thing you have is your own strength. We ain't never won nothing in our own strength. <laughs> Never. So, so, you gotta, look at somebody say, you gotta know the truth. So, so, at this moment in time, y'all still with me? Yes. At this moment in time, the Philistines is not just a normal army, but we find out that they got some giants, <laughs> or at least one giant that's out there acting a fool right now. And the Bible says that he was over nine feet tall. Ooh, that's a big joker right there, right? <laughs> you thought Shaq was big. <laughs> the giant would grab Shaq's head and pick him up like this. Over nine feet tall. Some say some 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 scriptures interpret what they put in the Bible as nine feet six. Some say nine foot nine. I wouldn't care nine foot six or nine feet nine. That's a big joker, Joe. <laughs> but he was known as the champion. Why? Because he had never lost Marvel. He had never lost a battle. I want to talk to the person in this next 30 seconds 
who believes that because nobody else was able to conquer it, that you can't conquer it. And that's why when you keep reading in the story in chapter 17, that it says that Israel was afraid. They were afraid because he's calling them out saying, hey, anybody who wants to fight me one-on-one, -on -one, come on out to the battlefield. And they, in the back of their mind, they're like, he ain't never lost. He ain't never lost. Sometimes God will send you up against some stuff and you'll have no resources to find out how to defeat it because nobody else has defeated it. You'll have no resources to go check and reference how do you overcome this because nobody else has ever overcome it. But it does not matter what other people have overcome. What God sends you up against, whether you can defeat it or not, is not determined by other people's success or failure when they went up against it. I can conquer any giant that comes my way regardless of if anybody else has conquered it before. So I want to encourage the person who you feel like nobody in your family has ever went through that and made it out. Wow. Amen. Nobody in my family has ever went through that, came out and experienced success. But guess what? With God, you're able to do yes. what nobody else in your family yes. has been able to do. <laughs> With God, you're able to get the degree even though nobody else has the degree. With God, you can sustain your marriage and y'all can die married even though other, nobody else in your family has ever made it in a successful marriage. It does not matter. Just because nobody else's kid was raised right in your hood does not mean that with God, you can't raise your kid. God, with God, we can conquer any giant that faces us. The whole message I'm trying to get to somebody is that giants do die. Yes. Giants are going to be on your path, but you got to know that giants do die. So David goes out. I'm just talking, I'm telling the story. Is that okay? David's in the field, and the Bible tells us that he worked for Saul as armor bearer and his musician when he needed him, but then he also tended to the sheep with his father. That's a message in and of itself. <laughs> Don't forget about home. So David's father, Jesse, said, I want you to go out to the battle. I want you to see what your brothers are doing. And he goes out there, his big brother Elias there, and he took some cheese and some bread and some other crackers and stuff. And he goes out there. And when he goes out to visit his three other brothers who were in the army, he uh he hears this giant, this giant, this giant Goliath out there roaring. Anybody who wants some of me, I'm a champion. I'm undefeated. I'll crush you. Who are you? You Get you to be 
be liked by me. That's not going to work. So then David is like, what the woman going to get? <laughs> what the, everybody else afraid to go out there and fight? And David like, you know, I want to know what the woman going to get. Because I know I can defeat this giant. This ain't no big thing, but I just want to make sure it's worth my time, right? I want to make sure it's worth the investment, okay? I'm going to have to use my sling and then I need to make sure that this is worth the investment. What I'm going to get? Oh, you're going to get a wife. You're going to get all this. Oh, cool, cool, bing. Word gets back to Saul. Hey, yo, do your own spirit over here talking about defeating giants and slaying giants and, and he want to win the prize and all. That's what he calls David and he says, hey, you can't defeat this giant. This is where we get to our message. I think these next six, seven, eight verses tells us how to defeat the giants in our lives. So I hope by now you've actually realized that giants do die. Yeah. So the first thing David does when he gets to him is he says, don't trip, I got this. I'll go defeat the giant. Point number one, how do we defeat the giants? Number one from our writers is believe that giants do die. Yeah. Nothing else matters if you don't have the faith that you can defeat the giant that's in your life. Giant or sin that you struggle with that seem like they keep beating you down. Giants are obstacles that are in your way right now from achieving your dreams and your goals. They can be financial loans. They can be bad credit. It can be, it, all of those are giants. It can be problems that seem unsolvable. All of those are giants. The question is, with God by your side, do you believe that these giants can die? Yes. You will never defeat a Goliath unless you first believe that he's defeatable. Yeah. I told you before, it does not matter how many people Goliath has knocked out. Because one person that he has not defeated is me. <laughs> Do you believe is the question. Do you believe you can overcome the sin you've been struggling with for 15 years? Do you believe that you can overcome the addiction that you've been struggling with for 30? You've been, you've been doing this for 30 years. But today, the question is, do you believe? Yes. David ain't never fought a giant a day in his life. And his faith was not in himself. His faith was in God. He had no reference of himself to say that I defeated three other giants. I can do the same thing to this giant. But he did have reverence of all the stuff that God had done. Ooh, let me throw this in here. That's why you need to be telling your kids what God has done in our lives. Yes. <laughs> so that when they face the same stuff we face, even though their experience won't be a reference, our experience will. So he didn't have a reference of what he had done as far as fighting giants, but he did have a reference of what God had done. Yes. Because God was able to deliver a people out of Egyptian slavery. Yes. He was able to deliver people through a sea and yeah. through an ocean on top of a river through a Jericho wall all of these things that God had already done that's what the Bible is for the Bible is for you to be encouraged when you face your own Red Sea the Bible is to encourage you when you face your own Jordan River the Bible is to encourage you when you face your own Jericho wall the Bible is to encourage you when you face your own lion's den and when you face your own giant that's what so David says, I believe I can do it. Then the first thing that Saul says is, no, you can't. <laughs> I think I said this a couple weeks ago. Some of us got to be careful who we share our dreams and visions with. <laughs> but David lets us know in number two, give no weight to the opinion of disbelievers. So when you do have to share, and when somebody does find out what you're doing, and they try to dissuade you, you got to put yourself in a position where you give no weight to those who disbelieve. Yes, sir. If you give them weight, you'll believe what they say, and you won't even get out there in the battle. David had an opportunity right there to say, you know what, you're right. Because Saul gave him evidence on why he would lose. 
It's one thing when people tell you, you win, you won't win, you won't be successful, but he told them why. He said, this man has been fighting since he was a youth, and you are but a youth. He said, there's no way you can defeat this child. But he dismissed. And you know what? It doesn't even say that David dis rebutted him. <laughs> he just dismissed it. And gave no weight to it. And then it says, okay, Saul was like, okay, I hear you. And what does it say David did? David said, hey, the Lord, this is verse 37, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. He started going back, 36, your servant, he said that, hey, hey, the lions and the bear, they came up against me. And he said, I caught him by the beard, I struck him, and I killed him. And then, but this is what we miss, because sometimes we say, David fought a lion and fought a bear. But here, he said, I fought lions and bears. Which means that he got into some fights with more than one lion, with more than one bear. I wonder how many times David was like, but God, you're going to keep allowing me to fight these lions? You're going to keep allowing me to fight these bears? I pray, I fast, I sing, I worship, I use my gifts, yet you still keep letting Like, I can't tell you right now, but there's a giant. <laughs> and the only way that you will believe that I can use you to defeat a giant is if I use you to beat 19 lions and 27 bears. Look at somebody and say, it's going to make sense after a while. There's a reason why you got to keep going through what you're going through.
today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Look at somebody and say Happy New Year. Happy New Year starts today. Happy New Year.